that was about as far as I want to come back. So welcome back everyone, Mike here. Kind of a uh, partly cloudy evening here in western Pennsylvania. And you know what? Every time I hear partly cloudy skies, it reminds me of a weatherman that we had here in the uh, Pittsburgh area. Uh, he was on the air for like 30 years or something. His name was Joe DiNardo, really well-liked guy. And when he would do the weather every morning, he'd pretty much say the same thing every day. He would just say, partly cloudy skies in the Allegheny County area. And you know what? He was right probably 95% of the time because that's just kind of the weather we have around here. But yeah, every time I hear partly cloudy, I think of Joe DiNardo. But anyway, that's not what today's video is, is about. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the least expensive yet most useful tractor attachment that you can buy. Uh, you know, a lot of people, if you're buying a tractor, you have one, you may visit tractor forums or Facebook pages or message boards or whatever, and you always see the same questions over and over again. People will say, you know, I just bought 20 acres of property, I'm going to buy this tractor, what attachments should I get? And by the way, if you ever do that, put as much information in, in your post as you can, and you'll get some pretty good replies. A lot of people, you know, they'll just say, I'm buying 20 acres, what attachments should I buy? But nobody knows where they're from you know, or what they're planning on using that tractor for, what the terrain is like, what the weather's like, you know, do you have a lot of grass to cut, do you got brush hogging to do, uh, you know, you do firewooding, there's so many different things that come into play when you're going to buy a tractor. So anyways, if you're going to make a post like that, put as much information in as you can. But anyway, when I see all these posts, I see, you know, a lot of people will try to spend your money. You need this, 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 and that, you know, get a tiller, a land plane, a grapple. Grapples are great. Everybody says get a grapple. But something that I don't see that often, and I don't know if it's missed or overlooked or people don't think much about it, is just a set of pallet forks. They are the least expensive, almost, uh, attachment that you can buy for your tractor. And at least for me, I find around here, I use my pallet forks all the time, probably more than anything else. Uh, you know, obviously I just unloaded this pallet right here, and by the way, that weighs a little over a thousand pounds. We're going to talk about what's in that pallet here in just a little bit. That's that'll be kind of interesting right there. I use the pallet forks for putting logs on this on the uh, sawmill for moving lumber, uh, moving firewood baskets. Uh, a lot of people use them that don't have a grapple. You know, I use forks quite a bit for carrying logs out of the woods because you can fit so many of them on there, and the pallet forks don't weigh that much, so you don't lose a lot of lifting capacity using the pallet forks. But I think uh, by far, they are the most useful attachment that you could get, you know, if your tractor has a loader on it. So when you're ordering a tractor and you're getting a loader on it and you're asking that question, that would be number one on my list. And I think when you get pallet forks, you find so many uses for them that you never, ever thought you would use them for. I use them all the time. Uh, they're great for moving attachments around. You can hook a strap to them. I just use them all the time. But anyway, we're going to use the pallet fork some more here right now. We've got a few more chores to do, and then we're going to come back and talk about what's in this pallet here. This is pretty exciting. You'll see. This is that lumber that I sawed uh, last night. I think it was last night. Yeah, I'll use these for uh, siding boards. More of that red pine. I was putting those stickers on and a uh, rabbit ran right out from underneath this pallet and right between my legs. That'll wake you up.
So I was talking about uh, pallet forks and how they're probably the least expensive yet most useful attachment you can get for your tractor. These are Land Pride right here. Uh, they're 48 inches long. I like the four footers, like that pallet that I just unloaded over there. If I had three foot forks, I would have had to, you know, wrap some straps out around it. I like the four foot forks. They work really well. Plus, they give you some additional reach. You know, I use a lot of nylon choker straps. And they'll cinch right down, you know, towards the end of your fork if you have to reach out over something and pick something up. They work good for that. So I like the additional length and the reach. I'd go with the four footers if I were you, but that's just my opinion. Now, so far this evening, I used the pallet forks to unload that big skid out of the back of the dump trailer. I used it to uh, move a little bit of lumber from here beside the mill over to where I was stacking it and to put another log on the sawmill. Now, had I been using the grapple, I could have done all three. Actually, putting the log on the mill, I prefer using the grapple for that. Moving the lumber over there, I could have done it not quite as easy as it was with the pallet forks. Now unloading that big skid out of the back of the dump trailer, I could have done it with a grapple, but it would have taken some time. Uh, I guess I would have had to use some big nylon straps and you know hook it up in a basket, pick it up off the trailer a little bit, get out of the tractor, move the truck, you know pull out from under it and set it down. Uh, so that would have been a lot more difficult. I could have done it, but the pallet forks made it a lot easier. Speaking of pallet forks and pallets, I'm going to take you over there and show you what's in that one. Any idea what it is? got a uh, Kohler engine sitting on top of it it is another sawmill a wood miser LX 55 now you're probably asking yourself what in the world would I need another sawmill for I don't actually I'm gonna explain I bought this mill the LX 150 and with all the options I have on it like the uh, debarker the simple set works, the power feed. Uh, this mill is about a $15,000 sawmill. That LX55 that's over there is about a $4,000 sawmill. Now with my LX150, I can saw logs up to 36 inches in diameter, and that's a big log. Now the LX55, you can saw logs up to 26 inches in diameter, and that's still a pretty big log. Now like this red pine log here I have on the mill now, looks like a pretty decent sized log, right? This one's about uh, 14, 15 inches in diameter. You could easily saw this on that little LX55. Now we have a large property and it's almost entirely wooded. And I bought this mill because it has the capability to uh, saw, you know, big, wide hardwood slabs, which is what I'll be doing with it down the road. Now lately what I've been doing is sawing mostly this red pine that I'm using to build stuff. But eventually I'll be getting into more of the hardwoods here and I think this is a pretty good choice for me and I plan on sawing quite a bit now I don't plan on making a living out of it but I will be using this you know to sell some lumber on the side uh, a lot of wood for projects of our own and things like that but I think for most people you know you're not going to spend fifteen thousand dollars on a mill if you've got 10 or 15 acres of property so that LX55 kind of always intrigued me I wondered what they're like you know how it would 
how efficient it would be, how easy they are to assemble and to run. So I was talking to uh, Russell from Woodmiser and I pitched the idea to him. I said, listen, why don't you send me one of those mills out? It's not mine, I'm not gonna keep it or anything like that. And uh, I'll assemble it and we'll do some videos on it. What I'd like to do is see how long it would take to pay for that mill with some hardwoods. And I don't think it'd take very long at all. You know, that mill's around $4,000, something like that. And I think that's, you know, for the guy that wants to saw, you know, six or eight times a year, that's doable. That really is. And if you have a piece of property, you know what hardwood lumber costs. You know what I mean? So if you've got some trees that are down or dying, a little mill like that, I think would be really, really good for a lot more people than a mill like this one here. That's just my opinion. So I, you know, I asked Russell about it. He thought it was a good idea. They sent it out and uh, they brought it yesterday. I actually had it shipped to uh, Bobcat of Pittsburgh. I'm friends with those guys out there. Then I picked it up in my dump trailer. But sometime after the 4th of July, when things settle down a little bit, we'll, you know, we'll do a couple videos assembling that mill, take a couple trees down, and we'll saw them on that mill and see how long it takes to pay for something like that. Because I think that would be a very handy mill for uh, most people, I do. You know, unless you have a huge property and you're doing it for a living, it's more of a hobby mill. But for woodworkers, uh, I think it's a great idea. Or even if you had a couple projects that you just wanted to knock out, you could buy one of those, run it for a year or two and sell it. And it's a wood miser. I mean, in my opinion, they're the Cadillacs of sawmills. They really are. And they just have a really good support service uh, network of people. You know what I mean? It's just a really good group of people that have these Woodmiser sawmills and the companies themselves. So, uh, yeah, I'm anxious to try it out and we'll see. We'll run it for a few months and uh, be able to report back on what I think of it. So I talked to my friend Marty from uh, Woodmiser out in Shade Gap, Pennsylvania, and he said it's taking them about five or six hours, I think, to assemble that LX55. So it'll take me probably two days, you know, moving cameras around, not knowing what I'm doing, but it'll be a good, uh, it'll be a good video series for anyone that's uh, looking to buy one, you know, because sometimes you watch videos from the companies, these guys are putting them together all the time. This will be the first time I ever assembled an LX55, so that'll give you a good read on how long it may take you. A couple more things I want to mention before I wrap this video up. Remember, if you're in the market for a tractor, don't overlook those pallet forks. In my opinion, I think they're pretty inexpensive and one of the most useful things to have around. Secondly, if you didn't see last night's video or yesterday's video, I'll put it up above. Uh, we got that real nice fire pit ring and uh, campfire grill from Steve Dixon, and he is from kingofthecampfire.com. I'll put that link in the description. Yesterday, I put it in the video and it was the wrong link, but apparently a lot of people figured it out because he said he got bombarded with calls. It's a really nice product. They're a small business from Kaiser, West Virginia, uh, so if you want to check them out. And lastly, don't forget July 4th around 9.30 Eastern, we will be live streaming our fireworks show. So that would be a great one to share with all your family and friends and would appreciate it. And I think that's about it. So uh, like I always say, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button, click subscribe and share them with your friends. Thanks. Okay, and don't forget, go check out Morgan's Off The Leash. That's my YouTube channel and check out Hunter's video. That's the most recent one, number 15. You may have to change that to Morgan's on the leash if these dogs don't start behaving. Yeah, actually, um, Archie's leash, being leash trained, so this week he's been on the leash for a good part of it.